our two board view on the right side, Min and Arjun Aragaisi. I think that match might be close. And on the left side, we have Magnus and Eric. And for the Magnus fans out there, they don't want the match to be close. They want to see Magnus dominate as he has been doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's Magnus with the white pieces. Obviously, the pace is very, very quick from both players. Maybe some of the quickest we've seen, Robert. I mean, they, they're both 45 seconds and they're right deep into the middle game. I say that Magnus has a slight advantage in the position you see because he's got this lovely central square that his queen is sitting on. And um, this square could be deadly later on. But Eric getting counterplay now. Now, Eric's doing this perfectly, but that bishop on f8, Simon, we saw that in an earlier match, just a bad piece compared to the knight on d2, which will reroute to the light square. So I like Magnus' position. Eric seemed a little upset Ooh. at himself there. And by the way, the chat... They made predictions. They said 43% of them said that Eric would score under three points. 44% said three to five. 12% thinks he'll score wow. five or more points. Five is a lot to ask for against Magnus. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy getting that half point. I would uh, hold on to that for the rest <laughs> of my life in bullet chess. Um, I mean, we can see now Magnus moving his rook all the way down to the end, getting a dangerous back rank there. But more pieces getting exchanged. The problem with Black's position here, uh, I would say, Robert, is the bishop. Look at Black's bishop. Eric's bishop is like a big pawn. It's trapped in by the two central pawns. And White's knight, beautiful in the middle of the board. And just positionally speaking, even though Magnus is only one pawn up, well, there he goes, two pawns up, that bishop just can't do anything. So the first game seems to be going Magnus's way. The bishop was bad. The clock management was a problem. That c7 pawn that's nearly queening is an issue. Magnus, too fast, too strong, gets game one. And we see on the right-hand side of our screen, it looks like Min, he's about to take game one. Opposite-colored bishops do not necessarily mean a draw, especially if you split past pawns as he just did. Now he's up a queen, and he's enough time. Arjun resigns. Min takes game one. Yeah, that's um, okay. Well, they're both off, and I suppose the, the Magnus game going the way... We had full, and now he's playing the perk opening, and lots of pieces getting exchanged there, and that is generally good news for Black uh, to equalize the position. Eric really needs to get going at the start of this match, and uh, actually now he's generated some pressure here. I wouldn't have swapped Queens though against Magnus. Try to keep the Queens on against this guy. He's so good with the Queens off the board. Um, and how do, how, how do you think they're going to commiserate or celebrate afterwards? Uh, Robert, you know, as they're in the same room, do you think they might have a, a shandy afterwards? <laughs> I think celebrate is definitely what they'll be doing, no matter... Well, if Magnus loses, I don't think they'll be celebrating. But I don't think Magnus is going to lose, so I think they will be celebrating, and I, I don't think we, we want to talk about how they're going to be celebrating, but they might live stream it, so there is that. Oh, wow. That, that'd be awesome to see as well. Uh, I think it's probably better for their celebrations that Magnus wins, because he's supposed to win, and if Eric does pull off a big upset uh, I don't know is the party going to be as good I'm not sure so um, yeah you know we've got to think about these social things before you party and oh. Black seems to be doing quite well here in, in the game again I'm looking at the game between Eric and Magnus Robert I mean nice last move there look at that king I mean the king is on d4 with a pass pawn in front of it and this is a good lesson use your king as a weapon in the end game it doesn't need to be defended it's not going to get checkmated so I like the way that Magnus is handling this he's forcing the white king back and if oh knight to c4 coming that is going to be a win for Magnus very good move there the the backwards knight moves are said to be some of the hardest moves to spot and uh look at that big d pawn okay he's lost the pawn now but after an exchange on d2 Magnus goes into a winning king and pawn ending, two extra pawns, and it's 2-0 to Magnus already. Eric giving a little smile there. They can obviously hear each other. I'd love to know what they're saying. Anyone who's a lip reader in our audience, can you please tell us what do we think they're saying to each other? Robert, what do you reckon Eric said to Magnus there? Was it something we can repeat on air or maybe not? <laughs> um, I think it probably had the word buddy in it because that is a common Canadian word, especially from Eric. But yeah, I, I'm guessing they're just having a little fun chatting with one another. Uh, but look at this game. I think this is Eric's... I see the eval bar, but I'm looking at the clock. Like, Eric is well ahead in the clock, but his knight is trapped. Oh my gosh, what oh. recognition by Magnus. Oh, and it's still trapped. Unbelievable. 
I mean, uh, how do you, how do you even beat? How do you, can you beat Magnus? I mean, it's just so so hard. And uh, also, we should just talk about the score in the other match as well. I mean, uh, uh, at the moment, it's going really against Arjun. But Arjun is attacking in the current position. He's got pressure against Black's King. His Queen coming in. This would be a great chance to get at least a point on the board for Arjun. Yes, yeah, so we will go back to our two-board view, and we see that Arjun going for the attack. I mean, those weak, dark squares in front of the Black King, the opening of the H-File, both could be a problem. But you know that Min is ready to take with the F7 pawn on G6. He wants to open the seventh rank so that his king feels defended. And great play by Min. He is already up 3-0. We just saw uh, Magnus do his job in that game over there. He's up 3-0 as well. But look at this. A forced mate for Min. Yeah, he's turned it around. I mean, it looked a bit uh, suspicious, his position, but, you know, he, brilliant chess to come straight back in and get another point on the board. And he's looking very strong Ming, at the moment. Um, Magnus and Eric, I mean, they're whitewashes so far. I mean, complete whitewashes. Come on, Eric and Arjun, let's see some points on the board. I think the lower seeds, the... Players who are the underdog have struggled mightily to score points. We've seen that in all matches. The closest was actually David Peravian, 11 half, 5 half. We did get a score correction uh, that the uh, game went Donya's way, not David, so it was still a six point margin. But Simon, looking at these matches, I think we might be talking about eight point margins because the high rated bullet players are running away with it. Yeah, it looks that way. But you do say that. I think this is Eric's best chance so far. If you look at Eric's position, he's got to be a little bit careful about Magnus's pawns. But I do like his bishop better than the knight. I, I Again, I say that, and he has to give it up for the knight. Yeah. Maybe he can get a draw out this. This should be this should be a draw, right? Simon, look at the clock. Eric has no chance of making a draw here. He is down uh, 14 seconds. Maybe Magnus will fall sorry for him. <laughs> yeah that that is one way to make a draw but i don't think magnus feels sorry for anyone no no you can't i mean it's bullet chess you it's a competition you've got to use all your assets including the clock and now we actually get a position where magnus is a pawn up as well so it could be four nil in that match and well, i would give eric a draw no I'd give chance him one draw no chance that Magnus is going to do that. He wins again. But on the other board, it looks like Arjun Aragaisi has given his opponent Minlay a queen. But Black is the one delivering checkmate. That was an incredible sequence. White has a queen, but no hope because the king on F1 is being wow. obliterated by the rooks in the night. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful finish there. And that shows the talent of Arjun. He can fire brilliant tactics into the game. He's going to need to do more than that. And at least he stopped the rot. And that is important. Stop the rot. Yes. Magnus. Mid -mid. We, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Simon. I was just wondering how you can stop the Magnus rot, though. I mean, is that possible? It, it looks like this position is great for Eric. I mean, the eval bar saying black is much better, but it looks not very clear to me. Is Eric just up a pawn and that's that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he, he seems to have good rooks in the center. He's got that extra pawn. Uh, the black knight seems good, the black bishop. So it does, again, seem like a good chance for Eric to at least get half a point. But why not a whole point here? Is that a second pawn he can grab now? He has. Yes. He's grabbed a second pawn. And the key to beating Magnus, I wouldn't know from experience, but from what I've seen, is not taking your foot off the proverbial gas pedal. Just keep going. Keep playing. Don't spend too much time because look at this simon all of a sudden i'm looking at the clock oh gosh eric is down now six seconds and there's a pin on the last rank that looks deeply unpleasant rook takes f8 with bishop b4 was in the air as well it's so tricky isn't it to play against magnus because he just spots every possibility and now magnus has won a piece as well come on eric we just want you to get a point i'll take half a point eric just get half a point on the board but i don't think it's going to be this game no, knight takes f5, just removing the guard, take g4, g7's hanging, h4 as well. So it's a four sequence. But look at Magnus. He's giving up his pieces. As long as he keeps his rook on the board, he will win this game on time. Sadistic. <laughs> Maybe you have to be sadistic to be the best player of all time. Oh, 
Eric Ooh. got it. Yeah. He's got the draw. And Eric Hansen scores his first half point, and we just saw someone walk towards Eric and bring him some juice. And then I thought I saw that same person in the mirror behind Magnus. So they really might be like in the same room or across the hall from each other. I think they can hear each other. I, I, you know, I've never seen this before, where the two players play, you know, playing can actually hear each other. They can hear the pain of the opposition. But Eric has got the draw, and I think you could see that Magnus was quite annoyed by that because I think he wanted to get the the sweep. You know, he wanted to win every single game, and that's not possible anymore. So I think Eric can hold his head high now. Yeah, it might still be a very lopsided match when it ends. And right now, actually, Magnus is up in exchange, but his king is in some danger of Magnus with the black pieces here. But I don't see the knockout, and if that's the case, then the material should speak volumes. Yeah, I like what Eric's doing, though. Oh, he can take the knight and take on g6, can he? With mm. a draw, at least. So, yeah, I mean, just take the knight. Oh, he hasn't gone for it. Wow. And there was a chance there for Eric to get another draw by just going straight for the Black King, but instead he, he allows Black's strong knight to remain on the board, and the Black King looks very exposed, but I don't think White's got an, an, enough pieces attacking him. Nope, and after Rook FD8, we saw the look on Eric's face. That was the look of frustration of playing Magnus Carlsen. Magnus takes another point, so he is sailing through in this opening match. It's great play from Magnus. I mean, yes, there might have been a draw, but I think that's the operative word, Simon. I didn't see the exact perpetual if Black didn't take that bishop on g6. And so Eric probably looked at it like, I should have it, but I don't see the finish line. And that's why he tried to play a move and it didn't work out. Yeah, it was quite a natural move he played. But again, Magnus had it well covered as always. And now we see Magnus attacking on the king side. And I like the way he's mixing up different styles. People... Maybe some people assume a bit wrongly that Magnus is just a kind of positional player, loves the ending, because that's kind of what he's famous for. But I tell you what, when Magnus attacks, he's also one of the best players in the world at attacking. Well, you say attack. He says, how badly do you want this attack? Rook h3 is about to deliver a mate on h8. And oh, queen h8 takes g7 is the big threat. Oh, and uh, oh, look at that. A lovely tactic spotted by Magnus. Just making sure the Black King is trapped. And this move was the important thing at the end. That was a, a difficult combination to see there, Robert. And he spots it straight away. Difficult for us, maybe, but not for the superhuman <laughs> Magnus Carlsen. And he's down a piece right now. So he's trying to figure out how do I actually end this game. And this doesn't appear to be the right way, but you've said this all day, Simon. The evaluation bar, get go away. Who cares? This is going to should be a win for White. I think so. I mean, again, the evaluation bar, as you say, is oh, he in Eric's favour. Oh, me. he's blundered and made him one. Oh. The world champion. Not the world champion, but the strongest player <laughs> in the world. Falls for a mate in one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We both said the wrong thing there. I was like, oh, Magnus, you know, he's got this one. And, you know, he just allowed a checkmate on G2. He laughs it off. But, Simon, we've covered enough of Magnus. We know him. He's probably pretty upset about that. He's crying a little bit inside, I think, there. Uh, but maybe someone's going to hand him a drink now. Maybe a special drink. I don't know. <laughs> whatever whatever drink Eric got there, it did the job. Give that man more of those drinks is all I'm thinking. Yeah, um, normally I'm not thinking that. But in this case, I think that, uh, yeah, he could uh, use another one to help him score more points. And Magnus, he just steals a pawn on c3. We've seen Magnus with the knight against the bishop a couple times in this match already. But when you're up a few pawns, you're just happy to have any type of position. Yeah, definitely. He is uh, coordinating that rook and knight so well here. And there's no way you can stop that pawn. And, you know, what is stronger than the world champion? An angry world champion. What's he got there? Look at that. He's having a sit. That does what is that drink? I'm intrigued, Robert. <laughs> that looks a bit juicy to me. And Eric's got one as well. I want to. I want to be in that room. <laughs> yeah. What is that? It, it, I couldn't really tell. It looked, you know, orange. So I couldn't tell if it was like a mimosa, but it wasn't a mimosa glass. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to 
check out when they uh, bring it up again. But we have another match going on. Of course, Magnus Carlsen is always a spectacle that people want to watch. But Min Le, you know, he is taking on Arjun Aragaisi. The winner of that match will take on Magnus Carlsen. Yes, Eric has some outside shot of winning this match. But if we're being realistic, Magnus is almost certainly going to sail through. So I am curious, you know, will he indeed be facing Min because Min is the high-rated player in the other match and jumped out to a lead. Yes, and uh, yeah, Ming is, is a dangerous player. I mean, his speed, his talent, he's incredibly, you know, uh, naturally talented. And he's got lots of experience of the online format as well. So uh, uh, it looks in that match, like we say, that, that Ming is dominated, dominating at the moment. Uh, I'm just intrigued. We, we know what, hopefully we're going to get into. We, that, that is definitely on the interview list of questions. What are you guys drinking? I am jealous. And uh, we're <laughs> going to see who it favors more of, uh, I guess, that drink, Robert. Yes. Well, I think uh, Magnus, you know, he's going to be happily sipping on that and keeping himself refreshed. But look at the score in this match on the right-hand side. Five for Min, three for Arjun. I'm pretty sure it was five to one. And now Arjun with the black pieces. Wait, what just happened? What was that? Oh, he just he blundered his queen. He mouse slipped. Ah, oh, no. He was. That was a great chance to bring the deficit to one point, and uh, he just blundered his queen. But, as you say, Robert, he is fighting back. And I know it's a three-point difference, but there's 13 minutes to go. If he gets a roll of wins, he can still do this. He can still win this match. He was on a roll of wins. That's the sad part. It is a win by two. For those of you who are just joining, we keep reminding you, you need to win the matches by two points. And so for Arjun Aragaisi, he used that to cut that deficit to just one game and to mouse slip with 20 plus seconds on your clock. Simon, that can be backbreaking. Yeah, it's it's horrible. And you've got to try to get over that very, very quickly. And Arjun, as we see in the camera, he's another player who, who comes across as being very relaxed, but maybe it's not so I, I i think the challenge for magnus and eric should be can they finish the drink while playing a game of bullet and win can can magnus do that <laughs> quite possibly because you know we've got to make things a little bit more difficult for him i feel because he is just too too strong um Whoa. the position on the board he's 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 a pawn down i uh, sorry not, i saw a brilliant move from Min Lei to win that game. He sacked his queen for Rook to win another. I saw the two exclamation points, and that's why I stopped. But now Min, it seems like he is trying to be a runaway train. And for the match that you you know, you know correctly focused on, Eric Hansen with the white pieces here, he's winning. He is winning. The Black King is very exposed. The white Rooks are coming into the position, and white is a pawn up. Can he put the ball into the back of the net, though? Makes his king safe, and... Just playing a little move on the side. He's also got enough time here. Um, and Magnus looking a little bit annoyed the way he's playing at the moment. Yeah, it should be a win for White. Yeah. Look at that move. F5. He needs to get a second rook to E6. But watch out for the White King. Suddenly there, Queen D6 check. And where's that king going? Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. It's turning again. Oh, he, oh that's a nice tactic, though. Getting the two rooks for the queen. And black, white always has a draw here. Is he going to take the draw? He's got to try to win this one, surely. And he is. Yes, and he is down on time. That's the problem for Eric. So he has that draw pretty much at any time he wants it until the black queen goes to D2 like it is now because you can't... He oh, 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 no. <laughs> Look at Magnus oh. crack up. <laughs> have, another, have another sip of your drink there. <laughs> <laughs> oh... I think we were both thinking there's no way you can lose this, and then it was checkmate, and he loses it. Commentator's curse there, Robert. <laughs> and it is karma in a way, because remember Magnus blundered that checkmate on G2, a queen takes G2 a few games ago. Uh, but for Eric, you know, he needed that game desperately. He seemed actually hurt, like his soul felt that pain, and Magnus is just having the time of his life. Yeah, yeah. I think he enjoyed that one, right? Uh, I mean, there's... I, do you prefer, Robert, when you win, a nice sort of gradual positional game or a complete swindle? What gives you the more satisfaction? Ooh, I mean, in Bullet, definitely a swindle because it just feels so good to be on the cusp of defeat and then to sort of laugh that off and just win a game and your opponent you know is frustrated. So if you're playing a match, that gives you the upper hand. But, yeah, I think that both these players are 
not too upset because they're drinking whatever that delicious drink is. <laughs> Agree with that one. Uh, and the match score, eight and a half to one and a half uh, for Magnus. And in the other match, Arjun, unfortunately, is on a bad roll here, right? It looked like he was getting back into it, but it's funny how one little slip, and he did, I think it was a mouse slip to blunder his queen. You get dejected, and look at that. That is just a blunder of a piece. Arjun mm -hmm. just giving away a whole piece there, and it's looking very bad for him as well now. Yeah, and Min is so strong. Last year, he lost to Danya and ended up in fourth place, but he was neck and neck. It was a tied match, and Min blundered and allowed a checkmate, and that's how Danya was able to barely uh, squeak by him and make it to the top three. So Min, he's been here before. He wants to win this, and guess what? You know what his reward is, Simon, if he wins this match? He gets to play Magnus Carlsen, and you know, as a grandmaster who doesn't get invitations to all the biggest events, he wants that opportunity, even if it's in bullet chess. Uh, yeah, agreed. I mean, even though you're probably likely to lose that match, and you realize that, just the opportunity of playing the best player in the world is very, very special. And uh, you never know, you know, if things go your way, and Ming is capable of, of doing well against Magnus, you, you might cause a major upset. It's, it's certainly more fun, I think, being the underdog in these matches. Going back to the games, the, the scoreline is pretty similar in both both matches. I mean, uh, Robert, really. I mean, uh, both Magnus and Ming are, are dominating at the moment. Oh, Ming just delivered a checkmate as soon as he had dominating. It looked like it was oh, wow. going to be a trade of bishops, but he checkmates Arjun Aragaisi. And unfortunately for Arjun, it just isn't his match. Once that queen slip happened, it was 5-3 to three at that point. Now it's 9-3. to three. So uh, Min says, I don't care how I get the job done. You asked, do you prefer to get a swindle win? Min says, I don't care as long as I keep winning. Yeah, a win is a win, especially in bullet chess. And, um, well, again, Eric in trouble in that one, and he loses another one. A bit of shake of the head. Uh, there's seven, just about seven, eight minutes to go. We're seeing this opening a lot, the Grunfeld. Um, problem with the Grunfeld, as soon as you lose as black, that dark square bishop, which you can see black has done protecting your king, your king is always a little bit weak, and that could be an issue for Eric here. The, the black king doesn't have much protecting it. Magnusing, Magnus targeting the other side of the board as well now. And look at the holes in the position. The black knight is about to go to c6, and then d4. The white knight would love to go to d5 at some point. So white's king feels very safe because of this pawn structure. Look at this, g2, f3, e4, g4. It's a weird structure. The dark squares may seem a bit vulnerable, but black, oh, I was about to say, doesn't have the firepower, and he goes back mm -hmm. when he should have went forward, I guess. Yeah, there was one chance there, I think, for Eric. And uh, now again, I prefer to be white here. That pawn just coming straight through uh, the middle of the board and another one joining it there in, in yeah, the position. This this is messy. The black king looks exposed, but that pawn on d2 is super strong. And Magnus is like, what did I just do? Because he can't play f6. The queen was loose on e5. Yeah. He's going to win the d2 pawn. Yeah, and he lost, he lost his strongest pawn there. And uh, Eric, though, blundering there, I think. Because now, somehow, I mean, whatever, whatever Magnus does, yeah? Even when he blunders, he seems to win. I mean, it's just incredible, yeah? It's completely true. Or is he going to win this one? Not sure he is. Uh, he's going to run on time. I'm looking at Eric's clock and down to 10 seconds against Magnus 18. No chance for Hansa. He's got king of six. G5 check is going to happen. Or he's going to do this and the pawn just runs up the board. Yeah. Yeah, four seconds is not enough. And I'm trying to remember, did Eric actually win a game or was it just draws? I think he won, he won a game, didn't he? I can't, he won yeah, the, that... the check. The checkmate on G2. Yes, sorry. Yeah, that one. Yeah, you're right. You mentioned that a second ago. Okay, what is that drink? Let's look. What is that? I reckon that is like some kind of orange juice. A pina, like kind of pina colada? It can't be of orange juice. Um, but it looks so nice. Yeah. <laughs> you reckon they, whatever it was, I want one. Do you reckon yeah. they've hired in a special cocktail waiter just for the match? I mean, that would be quality. You know, let, let's get a, a cocktail maker just for our match. That would be excellent. Maybe, you know, one of their friends that they're on this trip with just happens to be an expert mixologist. I mean, I'm... Whatever is happening there, I want in on it because, first of all, Barcelona sounds lovely no matter the time of year. Uh, whatever they're having, 
I would like some. Oh gosh, Eric does not want to have any part of that skewer on the diagonal. He's oh e5 back rank rook d1 take b1. Uh, oh dear, it's all gone a bit wrong, and uh, there goes. Oh, he doesn't even want the, the bishop straight away. He's doing it much cleverly, attacking the rook, and another piece is dropping there. You can see that Eric's a bit upset with the way things are going. And we're hearing a bit more information, uh, and apparently the, the cocktail mark, the maker is Eric's brother, Dylan, so who is very good at making cocktails. So we're hearing that firsthand. And uh, again, make sure you check out the chess bras. They are on tour around Europe at the moment. So if you spot them, you might even be able to get a game against them. I'm just curious if it's an actual brother or because they're bras, are they like bros yeah. in that way? Like I, I feel like it's probably not his actual biological brother. Not to say that those kind of, oh, it is. We're being told it is. Sorry, Dylan. My apologies. <laughs> I just assumed, you know, they're bras, so then they got that going, but wow. They got a lot, they got a lot of bra friends, haven't they? There's a lot of bras out there, chess bras. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really are. They're on a tour right now, so I mean, you could follow their schedule. I don't know it off the top of my head, but they are, they were in London, I believe, now in Spain. So they're meeting with many chess fans. Yeah, good thing to do. And uh, one of the great things about modern chess, you can stream your activities as you go around. And again, looking at the positions, you, you can see that this is Magnus attacking. I love it when we see Magnus attacking. So we don't always get it. And there's a checkmate must be coming up. Black's king has too many pieces hovering around it. The magic number when attacking is normally three pieces. And white has those three pieces. The queen is ready to dive in. One square fours will be checkmate. You can't defend that with a bishop because white can just take the bishop due to the pin. And uh, I can't see any way to defend that there, uh, Robert. Magnus winning another game. Yeah, did you see that featured chat? Death, taxes, and Magnus winning a chess. That, that seems fair. <laughs> Magnus just does it all the time. And 13 and a half to one and a half. So Eric knew that this was going to be a tough one. He knew he was going to lose the match. But... Do you think he believed he'd get more than one and a half points against Magnus? I I reckon he you've got to believe that, haven't you? Otherwise, well, why are you there? You've got to believe that you're going to score okay. You know, there's no point going into the match thinking I'm going to lose every game. I mean, I, I, Eric's not that kind of guy. You know, Eric's a great player, and on his day when things go right, he can he can score more points. Um, now the position here. I mean, I'd love to see another win from Eric. And this is a good chance, right? He seems to be doing okay. Magnus sacrificed the exchange, but it looks a bit dubious to me, Robert. Uh, yeah, because it's two exchanges. I was trying to qu quickly count what's the material. Ooh, it is two minor pieces for two rooks, but his knight is coming into d5 and maybe into e3 and c3, those kind of annoying squares. And look at the evaluation. How does Magnus do this, right? It still looks problematic for black. Oh, the hangers rook. Oh, he just drops his rook. Oh no! Oh, wow. Okay, that. I mean, how does Magnus do it, Robert? You you were saying. I don't know. I, how does he do it? I just watched it happen, and I still can't answer the question. And uh, yeah, Magnus normally he laughs when something like that happens. I think he's starting to feel a little bit bad. Well, there's only a minute twenty four left, and they can get to the serious activity of more cocktails and enjoying the nightlife in Barcelona, which uh, I'm sure they're both looking forward to doing very shortly. But a very powerful performance from Magnus. And just to remind everyone, it is double elimination, so Eric will have another chance, which is great. And Magnus will be progressing to the next round. And he's going to be playing uh, the winner, and the winner seems to uh, be decided in the other match. Yeah, Min Lei, so strong. If he weren't alongside the match of Magnus Carlsen, we would have definitely been focusing on his games against Arjun Aragaisi. Arjun Aragaisi is a super grandmaster, one of the biggest prodigies on the planet. Signed a huge sponsorship deal uh, that was worth, I believe, over $1 million. I think it was one point five, if I'm remembering correctly. And we know that he is a superstar, not just in the making. He's currently a superstar. But look at Min Go, Bishop A2 check. He wants to deliver a checkmate against that king, and he's looking for it. He wants to find it. And will he is the question. It looks like the answer might be no. Yep. Um, not long to go now. 
just have to reboot something quickly. Oh, oh good. Min just wanted to reboot his brain because he walked into a checkmate and he laughed about it. Uh, but looks like Magnus up 25 seconds against Eric in their final game. Probably going to win that one as well. And Min, he wants to win every game he plays, but he's down to pawn against Arjun in their final game. So we're looking uh, at these two matches. It's been decided. Magnus Carlsen, huge winner over Eric Hansen. And Min Le, winning by six points right now, but he might lose this final game as well to make it a five-point margin. He did just drop a piece there. So Min versus Magnus will be the case. But Arjun, yeah, Arjun will probably make his presence felt in the loser's bracket. So Simon, I mean, Magnus... Doing Magnus things. It looks like Arjun lost his uh, connection there, unfortunately. We'll, we'd love to get him back. But clever, Noir, MK, Min is having a wonderful time. Yes, indeed. So, Simon, last game here between Magnus and Eric. Yeah, it's, um, you know, great play from Magnus. And, you know, great play all around. I mean, like, it's great to see them also just enjoying that drink. And do you think we're going to be able to get an interview with one of them? Oh, I maybe both at the same time while they're making new drinks. I feel like that's commonplace for the chess bra scene. But right now, I think that Eric wants to forget about this match, and I know a way he can forget about it. I think, Simon, we can think of a few ways <laughs> so his memory will be short-term. <laughs> 